Welcome to a new episode of the Pen Nook. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing some Jinhao pens and particularly the Jinhao 911, which is the first Jinhao pen I really like. So at first, my, my first contact with the Jinhao brand was when CI and I got a couple of Jinhao sharks, just like these. We got four in total, but here are only two. The two others were uh, given away since we were not fans of these pens. So what do you get when you buy a Jinhao shark? And by the way, these pens, they run anywhere between one and four dollars, let's say US dollars, depending on if you get them from China directly or from a US retailer. So these pens are very good um, entry level pens. They're funny, they're cute looking, and uh, you, you get a lot for your money really. You have, in this case, uh, fine nibs, you have a fine nib, you have a converter included with the pen, which is very good value because if you know, some fountain pen brands, they sell the converters for like seven or eight dollars. So just the fact that you are having a converter included in your two dollar pen, it's a great deal. And really the performance of these nibs is fair, the writing experience is smooth, and um, overall, these are good pens for the price. There are some things though I wasn't a fan of. So first of all is the grip section. I prefer to hold my pens closer to the nib. And with this geometry here, you're kind of forced to hold it further back because the grip is very concave and triangular. So this um, gripping position was not uh, amazing for me, let's say. Then you also have the overall fit and finish. So of course, this is a very affordable entry-level pen. But still, I wasn't a fan of the rattling of the plastic parts and often I, I wanted to uncap the pen and instead of uncapping here uh, the threads between the cap and the grip, it starts to uncap, the, like untread this, these threads. So not a big deal, but you know, just some details. And finally the weight. So these are very, very light. And of course, I should have checked the specs before buying, but I didn't, and uh, it's way too light for me. So with the cap, it's 1.64 grams. Without the cap, we're talking more 7.17 grams. So it's a very, very, very light pen, and I'm not a fan of it, really. But, I mean, these are very good pens for other people that don't mind a light pen. Because, like I said, you have a lot for your, uh, you have a lot of value in these. So then, CI and I decided to move on to maybe a bit pricier Jinhao pens. And by pricier, I mean like four or five dollars. So it's still a very budget-friendly option. And this is the Jinhao X750. So we got three of these. This is the rose gold version. We also had a black and a white, like a cream version. This one is the only one we have left and frankly was the best one. What do I mean by best one? Well, on this one, everything works like it's supposed to. You have, first of all, a heavier pen. So we're talking 37.5 grams, so much heavier. So this is, was more in my, in my taste, let's say. Then you have a cap that secures very well. It snaps securely. You can post it. The pen looks very well, very good, I'm sorry. You have a more traditional grip section, very comfortable, just a tapered round section. You have a good looking nib. Uh, this is a medium, I think, I'm not sure. The funny thing is it says 18K on the nib. And of course, this is not a gold nib, like at all. This is just a, this is just a cheap steel nib, but it writes very well. And other than having this funky 18K uh, let's say lie on the nib, it's a good nib. So this one is a good pen by any means. And it comes like the other ones with a converter. So again, this is a four or five dollar pen. You have a good nib, good looking pen, solid so with some weight to it and a converter. So good value again. But sadly, um, the two other ones we had, so the black and the white one were not as good. There were some quality control issues so with the black one, for example, I could uncap the pen by simply holding onto the cap and shaking it. It was so unsecure here that it would just pop open. 
So this was not great because it's a great recipe for losing your cap or your pen or making a mess with ink or something. And again, uh, the white one was similar. So again, some quality issues regarding the cap and how it secures. So although this was a big upgrade, uh, in my opinion, from the Jihao Shark, I still wasn't convinced that I liked uh, these Chinese pens and I was really starting to wonder like why do people love this brand so much? I mean not everyone but there's a big uh, fan base for these pens and that was until today because today I received the Jinhao 911 so see I got this pen for me as a little gift so first thing first things first it has a very nice classy look so it's not a uh, kid or plastic looking like the shark and it's finer than the um, X750 so a very um, clean look to it we have brushed metal here I'm not sure if it's aluminum or steel or whatever but so brushed finish on the cap and barrel polished finials on both the barrel and the cap a polish clip polished clip sorry and something a bit heavier than your Jinhao shark so here we have 20.78 grams so right in between the two previous pens so it has a good weight to it being metal without being too heavy so this for me is a light to medium pen it's a bit heavier than for example just to give you an idea with something everybody knows if we take a Lamy Safari, this is nearly 15 grams. And like I said, here we have 20. So 30% heavier than your Safari. And the dimensions are not that far off. Let's take the pen tray here. So the dimensions are pretty close. It gives you a little idea. Of course, it's much more um, slender. It's much thinner than your Lamy Safari or then many other pens like uh, for example the X750 but let's go back to this particular pen so once you uncap it you reveal a nice extra fine hooded nib with a plastic grip section and I'm really a big fan of these types of sections so let me zoom in so this is your typical hooded nib um, layout so a nice smooth uh, grip section with a small nib protruding from under the grip just in the same way uh, just the same type of thing you would find on a Lamy 2000 so the same uh, idea smooth grip section with just the tip of the nib uh, protruding out and I'm a big fan of the Lamy 2K as you may know so this is right up my alley although it's a very different pen I mean it's a totally different uh, price range and it is an extra fine steel nib instead of a medium gold nib nevertheless it looks very good so transitioning from the body to the grip there's a small polished ring here you're gonna be able to see more detail in the close-ups but this is just some details and then you can also post it it posts very securely and what I like about this pen is that it's comfortable to write with uh, both posted and unposted it has sufficient length and weight to feel comfortable for me again like the other Jinhao pens this is a cartridge converter and you guessed it it comes with a converter here I have some Iroshizuku Yuyake ink and it writes very well now what do I mean by now well when I first got it it was a pretty bad writer um, it was scratchy, it was dry. I was like, oh no, another Jinhao pen I don't like. But then I forgot, oh, I haven't washed it. <laughs> and of course, uh, flushing your pens when you first get them is always a good habit. Um, but I tend to forget <laughs> to do it because typically it's not a problem on most pens. But then I figured, hey, this is you know kind of a budget friendly pen. Again, same price range as the X750 it's a two three five dollar pen depending on where you get it from so i said hey better clean it so i used warm water not boiling so just warm with some dish soap 
And using the converter, I flushed the cleaning solution back and forth through the nib and feed into the um, converter, and then flush it back in a small glass. And I did that maybe 10 to 15 times. And then I used only warm water and repeated the process. And then I inked it. And now it writes very, very well. So I have, <laughs> this is a bit weird for me to admit, but I must admit that now it's smoother than most of my extra fine steel laminems. It is very, very smooth. And uh, it's a pleasure to write with. And uh, like I said, I mean, the design is not original. Of course, this is heavily inspired on Parker, I think, or some vintage uh, pen manufacturer. But I think they nailed it. I mean, it looks very good. And um, like I said, I really, really like this pen. This is the first Jin Hao pen I really like. And um, maybe if you were in the same situation as, as I was, so you tried the Shark, you wanted a fan, Maybe you tried the X750 or the 450 or something, and you are still not convinced. I would encourage you to give a shot at this um, Jinhao 911. It's just amazing. So we're gonna move on to, on to some close-up shots and a writing sample, so you can see how it performs up close. Alright, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe it inspired you to give a chance to the Jinhao 911 despite maybe not liking some of the other Jinhao pens. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content and you can also follow us on Instagram if that's your thing. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time on the Pen Nook.